Yes, we can start, sir. Okay. We are live. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Great Ten Maths Leads with Sapiwa. So, for the past uh, two weeks, uh, three weeks, we have been looking at um, uh, Term 2 work. So, we have covered a lot of ground. We have covered um, measurement of uh, parameter measurement of length. We also looked at um, uh, volume. We also looked at uh, different uh, topics that deals with measurements. So today I'll just start with a revision exercise. So this stuff that I'm going to do, some of the stuff we have done together, some of the stuff I haven't done, and some of the stuff um, some of you have done at school. But don't worry if you haven't done it because we just going, I'm going to show you all the procedures uh, to do these calculations. Okay, so I have here a past examination question paper that I want us to look at. It's going to test us on different um, uh, topics that we have uh, covered so far in different topics we are expected to have covered. Okay. But it basically is just math, so I'm sure you will get along. Okay, so I have a first question. First question. First question is saying. First question is saying. Calculate the following. This is question one. Question one point one. So it has four questions. Question one point one. So question one point one is asking us to calculate the following. Calculate the following. So first, we have um, three, this is question number one. So we have 3.5 factor of 7.45 minus 2.98. Okay, so this is the question that we have. This is the question that we have. For us to uh, calculate uh, this value, for us to do this manipulation, first we need to uh, simplify what is inside the brackets. We need to simplify what is inside the bracket. So guys, whenever you are given a question that requires or that contains brackets, first simplify what you have in the brackets. So the rule is kind of saying brackets off, remove, the brackets first. That is your first step. Okay, so how are we going to simplify what we have in the brackets? So in the brackets, we have 7.45 minus 2.98. So we're saying 7.45 minus 2.98. Okay, so when I do that, I'm going to have 3.5 factor of 4.5. Four seven, but we still have the brackets. We have only simplified what we have inside the brackets. So what we have inside the brackets is representing four point four seven. Okay, what do we do next? Brackets means multiply. So what basically this means is we are saying three point five multiplied by four point. So we have 3.5 multiplied by that guy. Here I have 15.645. This is the value I have for the first question. Okay, so this is question one, one. Okay, let's move on to the second one. The second one is saying uh, we have, uh, okay, I'll just call it question number two for simplicity, guys. Okay, so we are saying 35 plus 12 times 4. Okay, so we have this question is saying 35 plus 12 times 4. What do we do? Okay, guys. Uh, looking at this 
looking at what we have here, he's saying 35 plus 12 times 4. What is he saying? So whenever you, let me give you an example. Whenever you have something like this, AB is the same as A times B. I'm sure you are familiar with this. When you have AB is just the same as A times B. So as you can see, this is a single, this is a single thing. We can combine this and represent it as a single thing. If this is one, one object, this is one value, AB, the value AB is single. So we can try to picture this as representing one thing, right? This is 12 times four. We can just say it is 12 four because this is one thing. So there is no way we are going to separate these two. There's no way we are going to separate these two when we are doing manipulation. Okay, but in other ways, what we, the rule that we are using is called a board mass. We multiply first. If there is an operation of multiplication going on, we multiply first before we do addition, before we do subtraction. We multiply first before we do addition, before we do subtraction. But if there is multiplication and division, you can choose uh, either of the two. You can start with multiplication, then you move on to addition and subtraction, or you can start with um, addition. So you can start with division. Between multiplication and division, you can either choose either way, right? You can choose either way. You can either choose to multiply or to multiply first, or you can either choose to divide first. Okay, so those two multiplication and division, they have the same power of uh, operation in comparison to addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction have a lower power if you are to call it that. Okay, so what does that mean? It means we are to first multiply 12 times. Four before we add, right? So we are saying thirty-five. We are using board mass, guys. It is called board mass. Okay, plus forty-eight. Now I have thirty-five plus forty-eight, which is eighty-three. This is the value I'm getting. Value of eighty-three. Okay, so uh, on question number three, question number three is not really clear. Okay, let me just check uh, the question paper I was using. Question paper I was using, where is it? Here. So this is the question. This is the question I'm using. Okay, okay, let me share it. Let me share it. Let me stop share and I share again. But now I'm going to share this. Okay, so this is what I'm sharing now. Okay, let me share it again. Okay, so this is the paper we are working with. Okay, this is the paper we are working with. So it says, uh, we need to calculate 3 over 4 of, of what? Of 375. Okay, so when you see a, a question structured in this way, it's saying three quarters of 375 of in mathematics is multiplied. So we can rephrase this question mathematically as we can rephrase the question mathematically as 3 over 4 multiplied by 375. So we are saying 3 divided by 4 multiplied by 375. Okay, so when you do that operation, you are going to get 291.25.
Okay, so as you can see that is a simple manipulation, easy to uh, get around. Okay, so you just have to remember the keywords of means multiply. Okay, let's move on to question number four of question one. Question number four of question one. Question number four of question one is saying three over four plus one and a half. Okay, so as we can see, we are having different types of fractions here. Here we are having a mixed fraction. Here we are having a proper fraction. So we need to convey those uh, to something that we can work with. How do I do that? I need to convert this mixed number into a improper fraction. Okay, how do I do that? I'm sure you are familiar with the operation to be done. We say two times one, we get two. Two plus one, we get three. So what this means is we are saying three over four plus uh, three over two. So this is the same as this. Okay. From there, what do we do? We look at this question. We are saying three quarters plus three halves. Okay. Uh, first, we look at the denominators. We look at the denominator and find the common denominator between these two, the common map. So the common map of four and two is four. Four into four, we have one. One multiplied by the numerator. So I have something like this. Then I say plus. 2 into 4, we get 2. So I'm going to write 2 there. 2 multiplied by the numerator. Okay. Okay. So what do I do? I say 1 times 3, I get 3. Plus 2 times 3, I get 6. It's still over 4. Okay. 3, ta 3 plus 6, that's 9. So I have nine over four. If I need to write this as a mixed number, I say four into nine, that's two. Remember what? Remember one. So it's going to be a quarter there. Okay, so I have two and a quarter. Okay, let's move on to question one of two. Question one of two. Question one of two is saying a pair of jeans cost 299 rands. How much will you pay for them if you get a 33 and a third discount? How much will you pay? Okay, so we need to figure out how much we need to pay if we are given a discount of 33 and a third. The discount. Okay, so first you need to calculate the value for the discount. We're only given the percentage. We need to calculate the actual value for the discount. Okay, how do we do that? So I have um, 33 and a third percent. Okay, guys, uh, we talked about this when we said a percent means of 100. So what this basically means is we are saying 33 and a third over 100. So we can simply write this as 33 and a third, everything over 100. It's the same thing. Percentage means over 100. So I can just write that in this form. Okay. And then I need to convert this number like we did here. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, 33 multiplied by 9, multiplied by 3, sorry, I'm going to get 99, is it? Okay, so I'll say um, 33 multiplied by, I'll get 99. So uh, we are now saying 100 over 3 divided by 100. Okay. This is 33 and a third of a percentage. 
I can write that in that form. It's still okay. Okay, so what then do I do? What then do I do? What then do I do? Okay, so I need to calculate the, the percentage. I need to calculate the actual percentage. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, 33 and a third percent of what? Of 299. Of means multiply, like we looked at it uh, in question three here. Means multiply. So what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say multiply by, multiply by what? Multiply by 299 runs multiply by 299 months okay what's next what next okay so when i do that uh these hundreds i can make uh these hundreds uh disappear right i can make these hundred disappear if i say uh, 100 into 100 oh i can just divide that hundred into here that will cancel out, right? Okay. We can do that. So we are saying um, one third of 299. That is the value we need. One third of 299. The value we are supposed to get is supposed to be close to 30. Okay, 29 something. Like that. Okay, so we are saying um, 2. 2.99. Multiply by 100 divided by 3. Okay, so the value I'm getting here is 99.67 runs. Again, guys, this is in runs. This value is in runs. Okay, this value is in runs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how we do it. Okay, so for for some who are getting confused, we are saying this hundred can divide into this one and you get 2.99. Or you can say this hundred and this hundred will cancel out, right? Why am I saying that? Let me just, because sometimes it gets confusing to other guys. Okay, let me just write it down here, the situation we are having. So this situation we are having, we can write this as 100 over 3 divided by 100, right? You know, you know this, right? You can say 10 over 3 divided. This line is meaning uh, divided, so I can say just write it in this way, okay? So this will simplify to, when we have a division sign, we are going to say 100 over 3, you know the conversion. We, this is the same as over one, right? So when you say multiply by, this will go to that one, and this will go to that one. Then we are left with one over a hundred, which will give us a third. Okay, so this is what we have here, a third. This is what we have here, a third. So this third, we are just saying a third, Multiply by two, nine, nine runs. This is going to give us uh, 99.67. That's where I got 99.67. That's where we are getting 99.67. So this is the amount of discount. This is the discounted amount. Okay, this is the discounted amount. This is the discounted amount. So since this is the discounted amount, we need to figure out the actual value to be paid. So we need to separate this from the actual price. Okay, so the actual price of the jeans is this one, 0.67. What do we get, guys? 2.99 minus... 99.67, which is equal to 
199.33. So this is the value to be paid for the genes. We are going to pay 199.33. Quite cheap, eh? These genes are really cheap. Being provided with such a discount, hope. Oh. Okay, so this is one way of calculating it. Okay, let me show you another way, another straightforward way of calculating this value here. Okay, so how can we do that? How can we calculate this value? Okay, so the question is, a pair of jeans cost 299. How much will you pay for them if you get a 33 and a third of a discount? Okay, so what does that mean? What is the percentage? What you, what you need to understand is what is the percentage to be paid? What is the percentage to be paid? What is the percentage to be paid? If you have been given 33 and a third, let's calculate. Okay, so you be some way. Um, you have to pay something like um, sickest uh, what sickest uh, six you have to pay sickest to six okay sickest to six and what and two thirds you have to pay sickest to six and two thirds this is the value you are supposed to pay of the actual price this is the value you're supposed to pay for the actual price. So let's do, okay, so we say 63 of what? Of the actual price? The actual price is what? 299. Okay, so this is one way of uh, calculating it. You have to pay 66 and a third of 299. Okay, so what does that mean? It means uh, 66 times 3, we get 198 plus two we get 200 so we have 200 over three percent means over 100 don't forget that guys multiply by 299 okay so when we say divide we divide this and this you get two thirds so you have to pay two thirds of the actual value so what is two thirds of the actual value 2 divided by 3 multiplied by 299. If you punch in your calculators, guys, this is the value you're supposed to get. The value we got when you calculated using the previous method. Okay, so this is the value I'm getting. This is the value I'm getting. This one is a more straightforward way of calculating it. Uh, this one, um, the previous one we did uh, requires a lot of calculation. This one is easy and straightforward. Okay, let's move on to question three. Question three. Question three says, the dilution instructions on an energy sports drink concentrate are dilution ratio, we have concentrate and water. So we have one, S to four. So meaning, what does that mean? It means one part of the energy drink to four parts of the um, of the water. So what are we saying? If you are to say drink S to water, drink S to water, we are saying one part water, one part drink, four parts. What a very concentrated drink. Very concentrated drink, guys. One part drink, four parts water. If you are to measure, what does this mean? If you are to measure 100 milliliters of the concentrated drink, you are to add 400 milliliters of water to that drink. So you make a 500 milliliter a drink you're going to make a 500 milliliter drink. If you take 500 milliliters of drink, 400 milliliters of water. 200 milliliters of drink, 
800 milliliters of water. That is what the ratio is telling us. Okay, that is what the ratio is telling us. Okay, so we have that. Let's look at uh, item one. Explain what is meant by this instruction. So we have talked about that, guys. That is what it means. One part drink, four parts water. If you are to make um, 500 milliliter a drink, you need 100 milliliters of the concentrate and 400 milliliters of water. Okay, let's move on to question two. Question two is saying, how many milliliters of concentrate and how many milliliters of water do you need to make up liter of energy drink? There you have a question, guys. Okay, so we need to establish how many milliliters of concentrate and how many milliliters of water do you need to make up one liter of energy drink. Okay, so what does that mean? What does that mean? It means one liter. What we know, one liter is equal to what? A thousand milliliters, right guys? One liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. Okay, so what do we do now? According to this information we have, according to this information we have, this information we have is telling us we need five parts. We need five parts. One part drink, four parts water. We need a combination of five parts. Okay. So if we add one and four, we get five. So we have five parts. So we have a fraction of five. Okay. So we need now to figure out uh, the concentration of the drink. So what does this five parts means? Five, you can say five is equal to what? Because we are going to combine the drink and the water. So we can say five parts equal to a thousand milliliters. Does that make sense, guys? Does that make sense to you? We're saying um, we are going to combine, always we're going to have five parts. Be it five parts of 100 milliliters, be it five parts of 20 milliliters, but what we know is there are five parts. Okay, so in this instance, we are being told that five parts are equal to 100 million, 1,000 milliliters. That is one liter. So I now need to figure out uh, the amount of milliliters that I'm going to use the drink. So I'll say one. As you can see, the, for the drink, we have one. So I will ask myself, how many milliliters do you think I'm going to get more milliliters? Because five is the whole, right? And one part, of course, is going to give us less okay and we know the rule by now if it is less what do we say you have a situation like this okay five into five one five into ten two zero zero milliliters this is what we have so we are going to need 200 milliliters of concentrated drink this is how much we need 200 milliliters of concentrated drink okay let's move on to water water we need how many parts we need four parts so we are going to say again one liter okay so we have five parts is equal to a thousand milliliters a thousand sorry guys a thousand we need to calculate four so four again is going to be less if it is less what do we say a smaller number over a bigger number a bigger number in this case is a thousand milliliters five into five one five into the two hundred they are milliliters guys 200 milliliters times four we get 800 milliliters okay so we have 200 milliliters when we add 200 milliliters and 800 milliliters 
you get a thousand milliliters, which is a liter. Do you see that, guys? Okay, sorry about that. Right? Okay, so this is how you do it. We have calculated um, the amount of water to be used, the amount of concentrated drink to be used. That's all you need to do. And you get all uh, your two marks left. You get all your two marks on just doing that. Okay, uh, this was uh, part two of the question. Let's move on to part three. Part three of the question. Part three of the question is saying, if your friend mixes three and a half cup concentrate with 15 cups of water, whose energy drink test the same as yours? explain the answer okay so what we need to figure out here is we have been told the correct dilution we have been told the correct dilution the correct dilution is one part drink four parts water so let's see if it is the same here if it is the same that is um uh one cup okay let me see if it is the same so what do we have we have three and a half of drink and we have what the cup of water okay sorry this is water guys so remember the handwriting there okay so what we need to do is to figure out if the drink and the water are in the ratio of one is to four what do we do we convert uh, these values to their simplest ratio because we need drink as to water right we need drink as to water and the correct dilution is this one is to four so we need to figure out if the cups are in the same ratio as one is to four how do i do that i have three and a third that is representing the drink right and i have 15. okay so i can write cups cups but uh, they're going to disappear because we're going to cancel out the things here okay so i will say two times three i have six plus one i have seven over two is two fifteen. Okay, so I have seven over two as to fifteen. The question is: Is seven over two as to fifteen the same ratio as one as to four? Is it the same? How do I know that? Okay, so I see there is a one there. So I need to convert this guy so that it becomes one. A ratio again, guys, is just a fraction. So I can just say uh, 7 over 2 there, 7 over 2 there. So when I do that, this guy is going to be 1. So I'm just going to have this as 1. As to what? I need to convert this guy to something I'm familiar with. Okay, so I am having 15 multiplied by so since it is divided i will change this uh, to what to um, two over seven like that i'll change it to two over seven like that so i'm now saying 15 multiplied by two divided by seven what do i get i get uh one what are you getting guys i'm getting here i'm getting four is two two point eight yeah this is not the exact value this is not the exact value so we are now comparing we are now comparing one is to four and one is to four point two eight so the question is the question being asked here is if your friend mixes three and a half cups concentrate with 15 cups of water who his energy drink test the same as yours explain your answer so we will start with the first one which is saying who the drink test the same as yours 
if you are having one is to four and one is to four point two at six, obviously uh, these are different ratios, right? So we cannot expect the two drinks to test the same. Okay, but which one do you think is going to be sweeter than the other? Do you think one is to four, the one the original concentration, or your friends? Which one do you think is going to be sweeter? This is going to be sweeter, guys. The original concentration. Why am I saying that? Why am I saying the original is going to taste sweeter? Because this one, as you can see, we're seeing one part concentrate in 4.286. Of water. So meaning we are going to put more water in the second one. Your friend has actually added more water than required. He has added uh, 0.286 more than what is required. So the drink is actually going to, the first one that requires 1s to 4 is going to taste sweeter than this one. They are not going to taste the same almost the same but not the same because uh, 0 0.386 might consider it to be small depending on the uh, concentration of the drink if it, be, it is that sweet well you're going to have uh, a big difference there okay well let's move on to question four question four question four, question four is saying Bus works at a car wash. He earns 55 rand a day plus 10 rand for every car he washes. Calculate how much he earned if one washed five cars. Okay, so let's do the first one, item one. If he washes five cars, what is the value for each car? So we are saying one car. He earns how much? For one car, he earns 10 rand. How many cars does he wash? He washes five cars. So I would expect uh, Vusi to get what? More than, right? So if it is more, the rule says a bigger number over a smaller number, multiply by the quantity. The quantity in this case is 10 rand. Car and car going to disappear. We are left with 5 times 10. This will give us 50 rand. This is the value he is going to get when he washes five cars, but he always gets 55 rand a day. So we are going to add that. He always does get this one. I'm not sure where he gets it from, but we are told he gets it. So we are supposed to add it. Okay. So we have every day, Busi, if Busi washes five cars, Busi works away with 105 rand every day. Okay. Wow. Okay. Let's look at uh, question two. Question two. Uh, the, the calculations are the same, but in this case, we are having um, we are having uh, seven cards. So we are going to say seven times ten. So we are going to say seven times ten, which is going to be seventy rand, n plus the everyday amount that you always gets. So we only say seventy times. 70 plus 55, we get 125. So this time he is getting more. He's working away with 125. Okay, let me do us question three. Question three is the same thing, but in this case we are told N. So we are we can actually calculate the the value that VC gets on any given day, just putting in the N value. So this is going to simplify to 10 N plus 55 francs. So this is the amount he gets. 
10 n plus 55 rand. N is representing the number of days. So number of cars, sorry. N is representing the number of cars. So if you have two cars, we're just going to say 10 times 2, 20 plus 55, we get 75. In the previous question, we had seven, so we're just going to say 10 times seven, we get 70 plus 55. That is the formula. So this is Vusi's working formula. That says 10 N plus 55. N representing the number of cars. Okay. Okay, let's look at uh, the last question for the day, guys. Last question for the day. Okay, let's look at uh, question five day. Question five day is saying, Fatima is getting a 5.5 increase in salary. And Ali is getting an increase in salary of 292.50. More per month. Fatima earns 4,575 rand per month. Ali earns 6,500 per month. Okay, so let's just arrive the information we are given here. Okay, so what we have, we have Fatima's salary. So I'll just represent Fatima's salary with F. So say F is equal to how much? It's going to be equal to 4,575. Okay. Done there. Okay. So we else do we have? We have Ali. So I'm going to represent Ali with A. So Ali, Ali and how much? And uh, 6,000. 500 per month. 6,500 per month. So we have question one. Question one. Question, question one is saying determine Fatima's new salary per month. Determine Fatima's new salary per month. How do we do this, guys? How do we do this? So we are told Fatima is getting 5.5 .5 increase in salary. And Ali is getting an increase in salary of 290. Okay, let's concentrate with Fatima's salary first. Okay, reason it along these lines, guys. Reason it along these lines. We are saying this is Fatima's salary. This is Fatima's salary. We are saying before the increase, let's consider that amount to be 100%. Okay, let's consider that amount to be hundred percent. So after the increase, how much is he going to get? He's going to get hundred and five point five percent. So how do we write that? I'm going to say hundred percent is equal to Fatima's salary now, which is what? Which is four thousand five hundred and seventy five. What is the percentage that Fatima is going to get after the increase? The increase is 5.5%, so he is going to get 0.5.5%. Um, I need to know how much this is. Do you think 100% and 105%, which one is more? Of course. Yeah, guys, you're going to get more, right? Okay, so if it is more, what do we do? If it is more, we say a bigger number over a smaller number. Don't forget the percentage, guys. Just showing what you know what you're doing. Okay, so this is the situation we have. The percentages will cancel out. Don't worry about them. So what do we have here? We have now 1.055. Okay, so we are saying 1.055 multiplied by 4,575. 
4,575. What do we get? What do we get? So we are going to get uh, 4,826.625. These are runs, guys. 4,826.625. So there is an increase there. There is an increase. 5.5%. I'm not sure the actual value of the increase. For us to find the actual value of the increase, we say uh, this guy subtract this guy to get the actual value. Okay, let's see if the question is asking us to determine that. So it says determine Fatima's new salary. So this is Fatima's new salary. This is Fatima's new salary. Question two says. Who received the greater increase in terms of actual money? We increased. Okay, so and now we need to figure out the value that Fatima got. Okay, so let's look at the question again. Ali is getting an increase in salary of 292.5. Okay, let's figure out which, what is the value for that? Okay, so we say subtract. 4,575, what do we get when we do that? Subtract 4,575. Okay, so we are going to get uh, 251.63. I rounded this off, guys. The actual value is 251.625. Okay, so according to the two value, Ali is getting an increase in salary that is more than Fatima. Because from this calculation, we get some way ago, we see that 5.5% is only 251.63. So Ali is getting more. Ali is getting more there. 292. Uh, more with uh, close to. 42, yeah, that's a lot of money. He's getting sparks. Okay, let's look at uh, question three. Question three. Question three says, who received the greater percentage increase? Who received the greater percentage increase? Of course, it is what? It is uh, Ali. But we need to figure out what is the percentage. Maybe that's why they did that. Okay, so we need to figure out the percentage increase. How do we do that? We have um, the increase, the actual value, 0 0.50 over the actual value that Ali is getting. Ali is getting what? Ali is being paid 6,000. 500. Ali is being paid 6,500. These are runs, runs, but the uh, units who cancel out will be left with the percentage. Okay, so we say 292.5 divided by 6,500. Divided by 6,500. What is the percentage? Um, oh, so in terms of percentage, I got that wrong, guys. In terms of percentage. So in terms of percentage, you can see the difference there, guys. In terms of percentage, here, according to the calculations we did, this is only 4.5%. So be careful on that one, guys. I also made an error. Be careful on that one. Be careful on that one. You can just, according to these calculations, we're getting 4.5%. Wow, according to the previous calculation, according to Fatima is getting 5.5%. So according to the percentages, Fatima is getting more. 
in terms of percentages. But according to uh, the actual value, Ali is getting more. Ali is getting more. Okay. Uh, okay, guys. That's all I have for you today. Uh, tomorrow we will start with question number six. So if you have time, just copy it and um, just copy it down. That's where we will start from question number six. Question number six. Uh, we will continue from there. Okay, guys. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye.